Hey guys, in this video, I want to look at a few verses in the New Testament where Jesus is teaching us, but a lot of times we don't really understand what he's saying. And I want to show how the reason we don't understand what he's saying is because we read it without looking at the full context of everything Jesus taught and everything that the Bible teaches. We read it through this tiny little lens where we look at a single paragraph or a single parable and we don't use the Bible to understand what it says. We just try to figure it out by ourselves. We look at it and we think we can figure everything out from that one little paragraph and we don't pay attention to the whole picture. And I want to show that in order for us to understand the Bible, in order for us to understand the things Jesus taught, we need to know the Bible as a whole. We need to know it like the back of our hands. We need to be able to see the full picture because if we read something and we don't know what Jesus is referencing or what Jesus is talking about or how it fits into the rest of what he taught, then we're not going to be able to understand it, which means we're not going to be able to apply it to our own lives, which means we're not going to be obeying it. So I want to start by looking at Luke 11. In Luke 11, Jesus said, No one lights a lamp and puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand so the people who come in can see the light. Your eye is the lamp for the body. When your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But when your eyes are evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. So be careful that the light in you is not actually darkness. If your whole body is full of light and none of it is dark, then you will be radiant as when a lamp shines on you. This is a passage that so many Christians don't really understand. They try to figure it out just by looking at this passage alone. But you can't understand this passage by looking at just this passage alone. You have to see how it fits in the whole message of what Jesus taught. You have to see how it fits together with other things that Jesus said. And if we understand what Jesus is saying here, then we can understand what he's saying in some other places. So to start with, Jesus said, your eye is the lamp for the body. When your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But when your eyes are evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. Now I talked about this verse a little bit in our Dead Church series. So many Christians read this verse and just try to figure it out. They try to think their way through it. But Jesus is referencing something from the Old Testament. He's referencing something that his audience would have understood. And if we just try to figure it out by ourselves, we're never going to be able to figure out what he's saying. We need to be able to read the words of Jesus in the New Testament and be able to connect that back to something that the Old Testament says. And the only way to do that is to know the Bible thoroughly, to really know it, to know it like the back of your hand. Here, Jesus is referencing Deuteronomy 15. In Deuteronomy 15, Moses said, If there are poor among you in one of the towns of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be selfish or greedy toward them, but give freely to them and freely lend them whatever they need. Beware of evil thoughts. Don't think the seventh year is near, the year to cancel what people owe. Your eye might be evil toward your needy brother and not give them anything. Then they will call out to the Lord about you and he will find you guilty of sin. Give freely to the poor person and do not wish that you didn't have to give. In this passage, Moses is saying that you have an evil eye if you see a brother or sister in need, but instead of helping, you look out for yourself. You think about what's best for yourself. You say, I don't want to help them because of X, Y, and Z. In this case, it was because the seventh year is near, the year when all debts are forgiven. Moses is saying, don't think, oh, this person's not going to have to pay me back. Therefore, I'm not going to give to them. But the concept is, 
Don't think about yourself. Don't look out for yourself. When you see a needy brother or sister, don't look out for yourself. And Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, if your eyes are good, your whole body is full of light. But if your eyes are evil, like Moses said, where you see a brother or sister in need and you ignore their needs for whatever reason, where you don't give generously and give freely. He's not just talking about you give a little. He says give freely to the brother or sister in need. And Jesus is saying, if your eyes are evil, your whole body is full of darkness. And then he gives a specific warning saying, so be careful that the light in you is not actually darkness. In other words, be careful that you don't think that you're in the light when you're actually in the darkness. You are in the light when you help the brothers and sisters in need. You are in the light when you meet their needs, when you see them and you give freely without holding back and without thinking about yourself. And if you're not living in that kind of radical, extreme love that we talk about in our Dead Church series, then you might think you're in the light when you're actually in the darkness. So you have light and your whole body is full of light when you live in God's radical love. When you show the brothers and sisters true love by meeting their needs no matter what and looking out for them and not yourself. When you have good works. We know this because Jesus also said, You are the light of the world. A city that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. And people don't light a lamp and then hide it under a basket. They put it on a lampstand so the light shines for all the people in the house. In the same way, let your light shine for people to see so that they will see your good works and will praise your Father in heaven. Your light is your good works. Let your light shine so people see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. Your light is your good works. In Luke 11, Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, no one lights a lamp and then hides it under a basket. They let their light shine. That's the same thing he said in Matthew. And you have light when your eyes are good, when you have good works, when you love the brothers and sisters and you meet their needs and you look out for them above yourself and you give generously and freely without holding back and without loving this world and without holding on to anything for yourself. So be careful that the light that you think you have is not actually darkness. As John said, anyone who claims I am in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light and there's no cause of stumbling in him. But whoever hates a brother or sister is in darkness, lives in darkness and does not know where to go because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So, if you love the brothers and sisters, you're in the light. But if you do not love the brothers and sisters, even if you claim you are in the light, you're still in the darkness. You are in the darkness if you do not love them. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Be careful that the light in you is not actually darkness. Just because you think you're in the light doesn't mean you're actually in the light. And then Jesus says, if your whole body is full of light and none of it is dark, then you will be radiant as when a lamp shines on you. In other words, if your whole body is full of light and there is no darkness, you will shine. As he said in Matthew, you are the light of the world. You will shine. The people will see your good works. Let your light shine and the people will see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. If you are full of light and zero darkness, you will shine. But if there is any darkness, then you are still in the darkness and you do not shine. Now, here's the thing. Jesus talked a lot about letting your light shine. He talked a lot about making sure that your light is actually light. And he also talked about lamps. He said, no one lights a lamp and then hides it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand so that it shines for everyone to see. Okay, if your body is full of light, then you shine like a lamp. 
And that's what Jesus is getting at in the next chapter in Luke 12. He says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make for yourselves money bags that will not wear out, the treasure in heaven that never runs out, where thieves can't come near and moths can't destroy. Your heart will be where your treasure is. Be dressed, ready for service, and have your lamps burning. We are supposed to be people who have our lamps burning. That means we are full of the light and there is no darkness. We do not have evil eyes, but our eyes are good. We see the needs of the brothers and sisters and we give freely to them and we meet their needs and we don't hold back. We look out for others and not ourselves. We live in God's radical love. That's what it means to have our lamps burning. That's what Jesus is saying here. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Be dressed, ready for service, and have your lamps burning. We are not supposed to be people who store up treasure for ourselves here on earth. We are not supposed to be people who pursue the American dream and pursue comfort and luxury and pleasure and wealth and all the other things that the world around us is pursuing. We're not supposed to be people who are living the capitalist life. We're supposed to be people who obey Jesus. We sell our possessions, we give to the poor, and our lamps are burning. Immediately after saying this, Jesus gives a parable of about a servant who waits for his master to come home. He says, Who is the faithful and wise servant that the master trusts to give the other servants their food at the right time? That servant will be blessed when the master comes and finds him doing his work. I tell you the truth, the master will put him in charge of everything he owns. So Jesus is saying the master has this servant that he puts in charge of feeding all the other servants. Okay, that's what we're called to do. We're called to meet the needs of all the other servants, meet the needs of the brothers and sisters. And he says that servant will be blessed when the master comes and finds him doing what he was told to do. But the servant who knows what his master wants, but is not prepared or who does not do what the master wants, will be beaten severely. If you don't do what the master wants, if you know what he wants you to do and you don't do it, you will be beaten severely. That servant is not blessed when the master returns. Okay, this is all connected to what Jesus just said. Be dressed, ready for service, and have your lamps burning. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. That's what it means to be ready for the master to come home. So many Christians out there think that it means we need to be looking for his return. We need to be watching for his return. I've heard Christians say that we need to be watching the news and paying attention to what's happening in the world and ready and watching for him to come. But that's not what Jesus was saying. In all of Jesus' parables, he was talking about the servant who obeys and the servant who does not obey. He was talking about the sheep and the goats. He was talking about the people who are ready and waiting for him, obeying him, doing what they were told to do, and the people who are not doing what they were told to do. If you're sitting at home watching End Times YouTube videos, but you're not obeying Jesus, then you'll be caught just as unprepared as anyone else. Okay, we all know that Jesus said he will come like a thief in the night. But the thing is, Christians think that applies to everyone. It doesn't. Paul said, You know very well that the day the Lord comes again will be a surprise, like a thief that comes in the night. While people are saying peace and security, they will be destroyed suddenly. It's like pains that come quickly to a woman having a baby. Those people will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness. And so that day will not surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness. So we should not be like other people who are sleeping, but we should be awake and sober. If you are in the light... That day will not overtake you like a thief. Jesus told the church in Sardis that if they didn't repent, he would come against them like a thief in the night. When he comes like a thief in the night, he's coming against people. 
If you are taken off guard like a thief in the night coming against you, then you are on the wrong side. Jesus doesn't come like a thief in the night for those people who are living in the light. And what does it mean to live in the light? It means you see the needs of your brothers and sisters and you meet them. You give generously. You give freely, like Moses said, and you sell your possessions and give to the poor, like Jesus said. It means you don't hold back. It means you meet their needs. You were put in charge of feeding the brothers and sisters and you were found feeding them. That's what it means to be in the light. And that's what Jesus says. It means to have your lamp burning. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Be dressed, ready for service, and have your lamps burning. In Matthew's account, he tells the same parable that Jesus told about the servant who is doing what he was told to do when the master arrives. He says, that servant will be blessed when the master comes and finds him doing his work. I tell you the truth, the master will put him in charge of everything he owns. Immediately after that parable, Jesus tells another parable. He says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish virgins took their lamps but they did not take more oil for the lamps to burn. The wise virgins took their lamps and more oil in jars. Because the bridegroom was delayed, they became sleepy and went to sleep. At midnight, someone cried out, Look, the bridegroom, come and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. The wise virgins answered, No, the oil we have might not be enough for all of us. Go to the people who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So, while they went to buy oil, the bridegroom came. The virgins who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the wedding feast. Then the door was shut. Later, the others came back and said, Lord, Lord, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. So, always be ready, because you don't know the day or the hour. This is another one of those stories that so many Christians don't understand because they read it by itself. They don't look at the context of Scripture. They think they can get the answers from just this one parable. They think all the answers are right there. All of the answers are here. You don't need a commentary. You don't need a pastor to teach you. You don't need someone to come explain it to you. They're all in the Bible, but they're not all in that one little parable. The context of Jesus' ministry and the context of the whole Bible is what will help you understand things like this parable. This parable is about people who have lamps. These lamps would run off of oil. So, For them to not have oil means their lamps are not burning. Their lamps are not shining. They do not have light. They're not in the light. And in this parable, there are five who are ready. When the bridegroom comes, their lamps are burning. They are a light. They are shining. But there are five whose lamps are not burning. Their light is not shining. They don't have good works. That's what this parable is about. It's a parable about having works or not having works, obeying or not obeying. As we talked about in our Dead Church series, a lot of Christians think we're saved by believing in the right information. But that's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. We're saved by believing in such a way that it changes our life, by believing in such a way that we then begin to obey. Because if you believe Jesus is a king, but you don't obey him, then you don't really believe he's the king. That's what it means to have faith. And in the Greek, it actually means both believing and obeying. It doesn't just say you're saved by faith. It says you're saved by fidelity, loyalty, and allegiance. You're saved by following and obeying and being faithful. That's really what it means in the Greek when it says you're saved by faith. And that's what Jesus is getting at here. When he returns, if he finds you not having works then you're one of the virgins who doesn't have oil in your lamp. 
and you get shut outside and he says, I never knew you. That's the same thing he said in Matthew 7. In Matthew 7, Jesus said, not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Remember, that's what the virgin said when they knocked on the door. They were shut outside and they knocked on the door and they said, Lord, Lord. Okay. Not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my father in heaven wants. Okay. Not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my father in heaven wants. Works are required. He says, on that day, many people will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and did many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's the same thing he says to the five foolish virgins. They didn't have oil in their lamps, so their lamps weren't burning, so they didn't have light. They got shut outside. They knock on the door and say, Lord, Lord, and he says, I never knew you. And immediately after the parable of the ten virgins, you get to the parable of the talents, which is also about works. Did the servants do what they were told to do while the master was away? And then immediately Jesus gets into the parable of the sheep and the goats which is about he's going to separate people based on whether or not they lived in God's radical love and fed the hungry and clothed the naked and gave water to the thirsty and welcomed strangers into their homes. That's what it means to obey Jesus. That's what it means to have your lamp burning. That's what it means to have your light shining. You must be doing the things Jesus taught. It also means it's not just you think you're obeying Jesus because you're doing Christian things. And we talk about this in our Dead Church series. You must be doing the things Jesus taught us to do. You must be doing the things that when he separates the sheep and the goats, he says, this is what the sheep did. You must sell your possessions and give to the poor. Stop living for this life and this world and all the things that are going to pass away. That's what it means to have your light shining. That's what it means to have your lamp burning. That's what it means for people to see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. You must be doing what God said to do. And if anyone claims I am in the light, but they do not live that way, then they are in the darkness. They're deceived. The light in them is actually darkness. And as Jesus said, that's the worst kind of darkness. Christians, you need to read the Bible in order to see the full picture. You need to be able to connect dots between the New Testament and the Old Testament. You need to be able to read it and say, whoa, that's the same thing Moses said. You need to know the Bible like the back of your hand so that you yourself, without a commentary and without cross-references, can connect dots. Because if you don't, then you're not someone who understands it. If you don't, then you're not somebody who can truly obey it because you're going to read a single paragraph and not have a clue what it's saying. It's not enough to read the Word. If you're a hearer of the Word but not a doer, then you're like a foolish man who builds your house on sand. Jesus said that person hears what he teaches but doesn't do it. And the house collapses with a great crash. So this is why it's important for us to not just look at a passage of Scripture by itself and think we can just analyze it until we understand it. No, wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord, and the fear of the Lord is when you begin to obey Him. If you want to understand the Bible, you need to begin obeying And you need to begin reading more than just a few paragraphs at a time. You need to begin reading more than just a few chapters at a time. You need to read through the Bible, not just for the sake of reading it. People get up in the morning and they read the Bible every day, and they read through the entire Bible in a year, every single year, and yet they don't know what it says. They don't know it. You need to read it in order to know it. Not just in order to read it. Not just to fulfill some obligation you feel like you have to do because you're a Christian. You need to know this book because you live or die based on whether or not you're doing what this book says. 
And this book warns you also to not get what you're supposed to be doing from men because it says they're going to teach the wrong thing. So don't assume that just because you're doing what they say to do that you're doing the right thing. You need to know what this book says. You need to know what God says for yourself and you need to do it. And you need to know it so well that when you read the parable of the 10 virgins, you understand what it's saying because you know all the other things Jesus said about having a light burning, about having your lamps burning, and about what that means to have your lamps burning. You need to be someone who understands one section because you know what the rest of the Bible says. And you need to be somebody who understands what it means to have good eyes or evil eyes because you know what Moses said in Deuteronomy. All of scripture is connected to each other. It's one cohesive message and you need to know it as a whole. You need to know it and understand it and meditate on it day and night. That means you spend all your time thinking about it, trying to understand it, puzzling it over in your mind in order to figure it out, figuring out how you need to change your life in order to match what it says. You need to know scripture for yourself. Otherwise, how could you possibly obey it? And you need your lamps burning. You need your light shining. You need oil in your lamp, keeping it burning when the master arrives. And the only way to do that is to obey what Jesus taught. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Store up treasure in heaven, not on earth. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Give water to the thirsty. Welcome strangers into your home. Live in God's radical love where, like Moses said, you give freely to the poor brothers and sisters and you hold nothing back. That's what it means to have your light shining. That's what it means to have your lamp burning. That's what it means to be a wise virgin who has oil in your lamp.